Grab your periodic table because we're gonna be going over periodic trends, specifically everything you are going to need to know for Ionic Radius. Now, I'm actually going to be teaching another YouTuber, Melissa Lucy, how to succeed with this specific topic and, of course, you. I've even designed a free study plan that has different videos and resources that I recommend. You can get that by using the link in the description. The next trend that we're gonna talk about is Ionic Radius. So, it's sort of similar to what we just saw before with atomic radius, where we were talking about the size of the atom. But remember what an ion or ionic, um, when we're looking at this, we're talking about an element being charged. So remember an ion, it's like going over these little things here. An ion is an element with a charge. Check, make sure to remember that. Next, remembering that cations have a positive charge. That's going to be really important to know. And anions have a negative charge. So little things just to remember. And we're going to have to understand which one is going to be larger. So once again, we're looking at the size of the atom. Now we're just changing this a little bit because we're seeing, hey, the charge just changed. It's no longer neutral. So whenever an atom becomes an ion, we're gonna see the charge changes, the number of electrons change, right? Because we're actually either adding or subtracting electrons. And then our orbitals where the electrons are, are going to change. Basically what's gonna happen, what's going to change whenever we change a neutral atom to a cation and a neutral atom to an anion. So let's start off with sodium. So if sodium was just neutral, um, we would see that it has 11 electrons. We can see that by using the atomic number, right? And then next I would just write out the condensed electron configuration. So I already did that for you. The main thing that I want you to notice is that this changes. So there's nothing remaining here because we basically have to remove an electron for this to become positive. So for a neutral atom to go to a cation or have a positive charge, it will lose an electron. And that's what we see here. So it started off with 11 electrons, now it has 10. We also see that, hey, I no longer have the same electron configuration, that changes. Because I no longer have that 3s1, uh, I removed an electron, so I removed this portion. So little things to note. And then same with now going actually a different way with our neutral atom to an anion, it's a different portion here. We're actually adding electrons for this to have a negative charge. So let's say sulfur, I started off with my neutral atom, it's 16 electrons. This is my typical condensed electron configuration. And then if I add electrons here, so I went from 16 to 18, so I added two electrons. Now it has a two minus charge. Well, what changed? So what's changing here is we know that we have to add two electrons now. So we added two electrons to our P orbital here. So this is going from four to six. And then our electron configuration changed, our number of electrons changed, the charge changes, so many things change, okay? So understanding what's happening in between is gonna be important. And there's more to this, of course. <laughs> Knowing which one is larger than the other. So there is a, a pattern or, or some sort of order, I'd say, of knowing our ion size or ionic radius, and it's gonna be this little post-it note. So this little post-it note will be your friend here, knowing that the largest is the anions, next is the neutral atom, next are cations, those are gonna be the smallest. So that is the order, cations are always the smallest, then it goes neutral, then it goes anions are larger. So um, if we were to even compare two different things, we'd see cations have a smaller ionic radius, as we just said, than the original neutral atom. And then vice, and then actually the opposite here, anions have a larger ionic radius versus our original neutral atom, okay? So it'll make more sense once we kind of like put this all together with the examples. But like I said, knowing this, like this is gonna save you, okay? Okay, all right, I'm glad, yeah. I try to like write down the things that you tell me that I definitely need to know whenever you send me the notes after. <laughs> so that's important. Cool. <laughs> yes, this is definitely important. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll bring it back here as well. So just going over these types of steps. So this is a typical question that you'll be given where they're gonna say, hey, arrange the following atoms in increasing order. And of course, they could also say decreasing order. So that's something that we wanna be aware of. But in this case, it's increasing order. So I know that I want the smallest, and actually I have that here. 
So I want the smallest to the largest. So cool. Before we get there, <laughs> because we're not there yet, we actually want to figure out the total number of electrons and make sure that they're different because there are trick questions that all of the electrons are the same. And then there's something else that we have to look at, which don't worry, we'll go over it. But for right now, I just want to show you how to calculate the total number of electrons for, um, for something that has a charge. So let's start off with gallium. And if I were to look at this, how I would figure this out is by simply looking at the periodic table and saying how many electrons does gallium typically have as a neutral atom? Um, don't I have to do the electron configuration to figure that out? So you don't remember this is going back to atomic structure? Oh, this is going back to the very this beginning where you have I to like know. subtract things. It all builds, it all builds, exactly, oh, yeah. Man. It's okay, so 31 is gonna be the number of yes. protons. Which is also the same number of electrons in a neutral atom. Oh yeah, okay, so 31. <laughs> I'm like, 31, how is yeah. she asking me this? I don't know. <laughs> 31, good. And then if I were to add a charge, so it's a three plus charge, do we remember if we add or subtract? Oh, we subtract. I do remember good, that. Good. good. <laughs> So we would subtract opposite of what you would think logically. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always logic. opposite. Like whatever you think, just <laughs> erase it and do the opposite. That's what I've learned in chemistry. It's very true. Yes. Yes. <laughs> As to why I was a chemistry major, it's torture. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's worth it. Um, but <laughs> if I if I were to subtract this, this would have been twenty eight electrons. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing for all the others. So I'm just trying to figure out the total of electrons that we have. So what about bromine? Okay, bromine is going to be, um, so it would normally be 35, but we're going to add one, so 36. Perfect. Okay, keep going to iodine. Iodine is 53, we're going to add one, so 54. Perfect. N-I-N. I forget what that one is. Indium. Indium. <laughs> 49. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to take away one, so 48. Perfect. Okay, cool. So they're all different, so that's a good thing. That's a good sign. Um, the other thing that we'll, we'll look at is just seeing, okay, well, how many electrons are there uh, for this? Well, I know that the order goes that my anions are going to be the largest. So I know that, okay, well, I have two different anions here. So I have this one and I have this one. So in that case, okay, well, which one has more electrons? I did. So I know that has to be larger. So this is going to be larger or the largest, and then it would be followed by bromine. So that's how I look at it first. So I'm going to see, let me just erase this so we can see more, but I know that iodine is going to be the larger one. So if I'm arranging this from smallest to largest, I found what the largest is, which is iodine. Next, bromine would be the second largest. And then now I'm comparing these two, so gallium and indium. And I see, okay, well, one, I could look at the electrons, but the main thing that they actually want you to focus on is the actual charge. So we would look at the charge of uh, gallium and indium, and I'd see, well, this has a three plus charge. This has a plus one charge. The higher the positive charge, the smaller the ionic radius, okay? So we don't like positive charges, apparently, okay? So those are gonna be the smallest ionic radius. So gallium is gonna be the smallest, and then the second to smallest is gonna be this indium. So it's always going to have, it, that's why this order is so important, knowing that anions are going to be the larger ones. And then um, if, if we had anything that was neutral, that would be in the middle. And then next, our cations are going to be the smallest. And then if we're kind of comparing two different cations to each other, the one with the larger positive charge is actually going to be the smallest. Okay with this, yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. Now this guy, little trick question. Yay, chemistry. So <laughs> this is where uh, this is actually going to give us something that is isoelectronic. 
This is going to be something to know, so know this term. That basically means that you're literally gonna have the same number of electrons for every single one of these ions. And let's actually show that, let's, let's figure that out. So let's do the same thing that we did before, just counting the number of electrons. Okay. So um, selenium is 34 and we're gonna add mm -hmm. two, so 36. Good. And then I'm gonna find SR. It's on the left side of the periodic table. Oh, okay, there it is. <laughs> uh, 38 and we're going to take away two, so Good. 36. Mm -hmm. Keep going. RB. Oh, okay. Um, 37, and we're going to take away 1, so 36. Good. And, and BR again. 35 plus 1 is 36. Good. So that's where you're going to see, okay, well, yeah, these are all the same. What do I do now? Like every single one of these have the same number of electrons. And then they actually would have the same electron configuration because they have the same number of electrons. So this is where, once again, knowing that, hey, this is going to be really helpful because I know anything that it's ha actually is an anion will be first or will be, will be greater, um, will be the largest. So the other thing is also saying, okay, well, if it's a higher or a larger cation, which I have here, if it's a larger positive charge, that's actually going to be smaller. So if I were to rearrange this, I first just want to look at the anions. So I'll highlight those. So anions, I just want to look at the negative charge. Which one is greater? Which one is the largest one? Um. And I want you to look at the charge. So if, if the, and I'm looking at this, a larger anion, meaning a larger negative charge, is going to be larger. Okay, all right, because I'm thinking anion. about it like the opposite, you know, the opposite, well, we add exactly. two, so. Okay, okay. So, um, selenium then? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that would be the largest, yeah. And I'm still arranging this in increasing order, so I'm still going from smallest to largest. So yeah, selenium with the two minus charge would be the larger one. Then I know the second to largest would be the other anion with the negative charge. Now I'm, I'm comparing these two um, cations and I'm looking at the opposite here and I'm saying, okay, well, the larger the positive charge or the larger the cation, the smaller the size. So what would that be? Which one's the smallest? Looking at cat cations in pink. Wait, are we like switching things up or is this the same thing? So like the Same larger... sort of concept. Oh, okay. So then um, the SR. Yes, so that would be the smallest. Is this making sense? No, I was actually thinking the other way. So Because the two plus, it doesn't that make it bigger? <laughs> so that's where it changes here. So the larger the cation, so the larger the, po the positive charge, notice that, hey, the cations are the smallest ones, right, based on our trend. So the larger the positive charge, the smaller it is. The larger okay. the negative charge, the higher it is. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my poor brain. <laughs> so I ha the larger, and that's exactly what this trend is saying, the larger, I'm going to say negative charge, is going to be first, it's going to be like the largest, and then the smallest is actually going to be the largest positive charge. Okay, that actually helps me. Okay. That's good. Okay. That's what you have to remember to do. Okay. And I'm going to keep going. So what if we had something different where we're just comparing all of these um, ions and they're the same exact charge and they're actually in the same exact column. So knowing this trend is going to be important for ionic radius and knowing that, hey, we're going to actually have the same sort of trend as the atomic radius where we're going to increase as we move down a column. So in this case, if we were asked to, you know, write this in increasing order, then I know that, okay, once again, I'm going from smallest to largest. And if I were to compare all of these 
all of these elements here, then, well, the highest is going to be iodine, right? So that's going to be the largest. And then next, I would just literally keep going down and saying, or keep going up. And this is bromine. This is chlorine. Fluorine is the smallest. And it's just knowing this trend because it's not really going to help us necessarily that, um, hey, they're all the same charge. I don't know what to do there. Um, but that's where you kind of say, okay, well, they're all in the same column. I know the trend is at like as we move down a column, then it's actually increasing the ionic radius. All right, real talk. How are you doing? How is, is this making sense to you? Leave a comment. Let me know what's going on because I know right now it can feel a little bit overwhelming and it might be time that you kind of say, can I do this? Is this something that I'm able to actually pass? Am I able to pass this class or do well on my exam? And know that you are. It's just going to require a little bit more effort. It's gonna require you to possibly watch several more videos and do more practice problems, but it's not impossible.